The President is Missing, 2018, is a gripping political thriller co-written by James Patterson and former President Bill Clinton. The novel is predominantly narrated from the first-person perspective of U.S. President Jonathan Lincoln Duncan, who is urgently trying to uncover a traitor within his own administration and thwart a catastrophic cyber attack that threatens to cripple the nation's economy, infrastructure, and defenses. Within just two months of its release, Knopf reported that the book had sold over a million copies in North America. The story opens with Duncan preparing for a crucial committee hearing before the House where he faces allegations of negotiating with Suleiman Sindoruk, the leader of the cyber terrorist group Sons of Jihad, SOJ. Despite his advisor's concerns that his testimony could lead to impeachment or imprisonment, Duncan remains resolute and insists on proceeding. The mock trial rehearsal does not go smoothly, with Duncan losing his composure multiple times. Meanwhile, Duncan's adult daughter, Studying in Paris receives a top secret warning from a woman named Nina about a devastating cyber attack codenamed Dark Ages that could destroy the United States. Given that only eight people are supposed to know this code, Duncan suspects a mole within his circle and invites Nina to the White House. Nina, only partially informed, arranges a covert meeting at a baseball game between Duncan and her partner, Augie, to divulge the full details. Disguising himself and leaving his Secret Service detail behind, Duncan goes undercover to meet Augie at the game. The meeting is abruptly interrupted when Suleiman's mercenaries, including a female assassin codenamed Bach, ambush them. Nina is killed in the attack, but Duncan, a former soldier, manages to fend off some of the assassins before the Secret Service arrives, rescuing him and Augie. They are whisked away to a safe house in Virginia, but their escape is marred by an attack that results in the deaths of two Secret Service agents. Duncan and Augie narrowly escape again, and Duncan discovers that Nina and Augie had been working for Suleiman. They created the Dark Ages virus, which operates like ransomware by erasing all data from infected systems. Realizing the virus's true potential only after its release, Nina and Augie defected to warn the president. Augie explains that if the virus activates, America's entire online infrastructure will collapse, causing irretrievable loss of data on every internet-enabled device. This would lead to the destruction of financial institutions, electricity grids, defense systems, and all other critical internet networks essential to the country's functioning. The situation is dire as the virus is set to activate in just one day. On a slightly positive note, the U.S. military has been developing an international network as a backup, which, while not capable of fully sustaining the country, would prevent it from being completely defenseless. Meanwhile, the president's top cybersecurity team believes they might have found a way to stop the virus, but their test goes disastrously wrong. Instead of halting the virus, their program inadvertently activates it. However, they discover a failsafe within the virus. They have 30 minutes to enter an abort code or the virus will fully activate and erase all data across the nation. The president and his team scramble to guess the correct password. At the very last moment, the president's chief of staff, Carolyn Brock, correctly guesses the password and aborts the virus. In the novel's climax, Duncan reveals that he knew the password all along. The mole had sent the password to Nina in a text message and Duncan had accessed her messages and entered the password immediately without disclosing it. The password guessing session was a strategic ploy to force the mole into revealing themselves. Duncan then confronts Carolyn with evidence of her treason and collusion with Suleiman. Carolyn had planned to frame the vice president for the crime to seize the VP's position and emerge as a hero. Her scheme nearly succeeded, Duncan was initially convinced that his embittered former rival, the VP, was the mole. With the crisis averted, the president delivers a powerful speech that boosts his approval ratings from 30% to 80%. The epilogue resolves various storylines, including the political maneuvers between the Speaker of the House and the VP, the indictments against Carolyn Brock, an improvement in Duncan's health. He has a rare autoimmune disease that could be fatal if not properly managed and a hopeful account of successful bipartisan legislation on gun violence, secure voting systems, and law enforcement. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, 
and be sure to subscribe. Thank you.